What's up Photoshop fam? I'm Rick Navarro and this is the Pixel Laundry Photoshop Academy. Okay, so let's open up Photoshop and take a look around. So I'm using the latest version of Photoshop, which is 21.0. Three. If you're a new user and you get your hands on a copy of Photoshop, it's more than likely going to be like this or something very similar. So when you open it up, first thing you have here is uh, this application page that's going to give you a list of all your previous documents that you've opened. If you've never opened it before, it'd probably be empty. Um, but here you've got an opportunity to learn. They've added these modules recently where they're incorporating tutorials inside of the program, which is really great. You'll also have uh, your previous work that you may have opened up from Lightroom or anything that you have um, tied to here with the cloud or any, like I said, any previous documents that you may have uh, opened up at some point. I personally don't use this very much because I'm already a very acclimated user. So um, I'm, I'm actually going to turn this off. The way you do that is by going in here to the preferences. Let's go ahead and open up general and we're gonna turn this auto home screen off. And while we're in here, I'm also going to make sure that my use legacy transform free transform is clicked on. I'll explain more about that later. As you can see, I'm working on a Mac. Um, if you're working on a PC, the major differences is going to be uh, are your hot hot keys and which side the the X is on to close your window. Um, I've worked on both. There isn't really a ton that's super, super different. Basically all the concepts are all the same. It's only uh, the hotkeys that might be a little bit different. So when you open up, let's go ahead and open up just a document just so that we've got something to kind of look at. So when you open up a document, this is what's going to come up. This is your workspace. This is where you're going to access any of your tools that you're gonna use in Photoshop. And what we can see is that there's a number of tools that have come up and let's talk about a few of those, okay? So th this is known as your workspace in here. But the beauty of this thing is that, is that it's completely interchangeable and you can use it and customize it in a way that makes sense for you. Maybe in the beginning you wanna work as it has been presented to you. You wanna use it the way that they've given it to you and through time, you can use some of these things I'm about to show you to kind of develop your own style and what works best for you. This is the default setup for Photoshop, but I can show you here that I've saved certain workspaces that are functional for me. So I'm right-handed, so I like to have my tools on the right-hand part of the screen. So I take my, my toolbar and all my palettes, and I've kind of stacked them together. Actually, this is my on-screen uh, demo workspace that I use when I'm creating tutorials for you guys. I actually work, uh, if you can see here, I've got a monitor here. I also have another computer a monitor here, and this is my main monitor. I actually work with this palette completely off of the screen so that I'm maximizing the amount of space that I'm using on my main monitor. And that way I can work like this at full screen. Okay, but for the sake of demo purposes, I like to bring this one over so you guys can see exactly what I'm what I'm doing and, and what tools I'm using. As you can see, this is my YouTube or my tutorial setup workspace that I've created specifically for this type of demonstration. Okay, let's go back to the default set, which is here. Okay, and as you can see, you've got a number of panels that are up. These individual, these individual modules here, we call them panels. And as you can see, you can switch through them and they will give you a whole host of options. And each of these, you'll see a little, a little drop down menu box in the corner that correspond with the individual panel. These are called our windows. And you'll find all of these all of these windows in the window menu set, which is up here. And as you can see, if I turn off adjustments, adjustments goes away. If I turn it back on, adjustments will come back. In Photoshop, you're going to find that there are several ways to do the exact same thing. And there's no right one way. There's just the most convenient way for you. And through time, you learn techniques and shortcuts and workarounds that work best with your workflow. Over here on the left, this is called the toolbar. And inside this toolbar are your main sets of tools that you're going to use in Photoshop. These are the primary tools that you're gonna come back to on everything you do, no matter how simple or how complex. When you open up a brand new session, or if you haven't used it before, you'll have these little hover over recommendations or kind of like tutorials, little tiny tutorials that are not only give you uh, what 
exactly it is that you're using, but it's also going to tell you what the hotkey is. So a uh, pro tip, take a glance at the letter that's being given to you here, because if you use that letter on the keyboard, that is going to give you the hotkey for that individual tool. So this is the crop tool. So the, the shortcut to the crop tool is C. This is the lasso tool. So the shortcut to the lasso tool is L. A lot of these you're gonna find that they're very intuitive. So once you learn what the tool is, you can easily remember it because usually it's the first letter of that tool. So the lasso tool is L, the crop tool is C. Then you've got some others like the move tool, which is an M you would think, but it's V and V is in move. So with time and practice, you'll remember that. I wanna go ahead and turn off those options. So we're gonna go into our preferences and we're gonna go click off of show tool tips. You can turn that on if you want it. Um, I'm gonna turn it off now so it's not distracting while we're working. Another thing I wanna show you in here right before we jump back is this interface. And this interface option gives you different viewing options depending on your screen and your monitor or your working preference or your lighting situation or just personal preference. You may wanna change the lighting scenario of your UI elements. I personally like them a little bit darker. Uh, dark colors tend to fade away in your eyes and I don't wanna focus on anything else other than the image that I'm working on. So I personally turn it down to dark, but you may like it at a different color. So you can set it up there. And there's also other preferences here that you can kind of look into and manipulate. This will give you different user interface options that may be more preferential to your setup. So now that I hover over, it's turned off those tool tips. We can continue where we were. So this is the toolbar. And again, these are all the tools that you're going to be using. This is your foreground and your background swatch that can be switched by clicking on this little arrow. If you double click inside here, you'll get a color picker and that will allow you to manipulate and change colors. And if for some reason you wanna switch those foreground and background elements, all you have to do is hit X and it will flip those foreground and background colors for you. Okay, so if you go down here and you select your zoom tool, um, you can use this to zoom in and out. Now, the way that this is set up right now is that if I click and drag, it's going to make a selection. Now, I can change the way that zoom tool operates if I use what's called my options bar. Now, for every single one of these tools, take a look what's happening up here. If I click on each of these tools, I'm getting different sets of options that are being made available to me at the top that will further manipulate the image, or excuse me, further manipulate the power or the capability of the individual tool. In this particular case, I'm using the zoom tool. Now, by default, it's set to the magnify. So that's gonna go in or zoom in. If I click here, it's going to zoom out. I can use this as a single click option, or if I go into my preference settings, I can go over here to tools and animate the zooms. That way, if I click and hold, it's going to slowly zoom in and out for me. I never use the, the magnification tool that goes out. I only use the hotkeys for this particular option. So now, if you look here, if I hold down the alt or option key, on PC it's probably control. If you hold down that key, you'll notice that the plus is turning into a minus. So that is giving me an alternate. That way I don't have to zoom in here, do my zoom, click again, zoom out, zoom in, zoom out, zoom in, zoom out. So it's a quick way to move very quickly in and out. And again, if I click and hold it, it'll animate it for me. Or if I just click one at a time, it's going to move for me. Now, if I wanna move into a section, I can click and drag and it's gonna highlight that section. Now that is your regular zoom. Scrubby zoom, if you click this option right here, it will now, instead of making a selection, now I can just kind of point and click to the area that I want to zoom in on. And I can zoom by clicking down and scrubbing all the way in and it's going to magnify or zoom out as I need. So I can zoom in anywhere I need by just going left and right with my mouse. This is my preferred method. I was actually a click and drag zoom guy for the longest time. And I worked in a place that got me used to using the scrubby zoom. And I haven't looked back since because it just lets me move quicker. Now, if you'll notice what I'm doing is holding down the space bar on my, on my, uh, my keyboard. And that is bringing up the hand tool. The hotkey for the hand tool is the letter H. 
H for hand, as we mentioned earlier, pretty intuitive. Um, but while I am zooming in and out, sometimes I might zoom too far and I need to move it over. So by holding the space bar, I can grab the entire image and move it over to wherever I need to be, okay? If you'll notice, there's a little grid here. This is the default setting for Photoshop that will come on when you have a brand new set of Photoshop. You can turn that off by going to View and Show Extras, Show, and then your pixel grid. Excuse me, not Show Extras, just Show, and it's under your pixel grid. And you can turn that off so that you can actually get down there to the pixels. This is my preferred way to work because I deal heavily in imagery. Uh, some people deal heavily, heavily in um, uh, web design or something that may require uh, the pixel grids and the precision that that offers. I don't need that so I turn it off because it's visually distracting for me when I need to get in here and actually see the individual pixels.